Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in this History of Graphic Design Art Movement series. Uh, last time we went over Dada and Placa Steel, and today we're going to be covering Russian Constructivism. And not just Russian Constructivism as an art movement, but sort of the iconography of how Russian Constructivism has a sort of sinister notion in much of Western media today. So let's start with Russian Constructivism. So. Uh, constructivism was an art movement that took a huge prominence in Russia under a Mr. Vladimir Totlin. Uh, Russian constructivism became widely popular and iconic because it used a simple imagery of the human figure or face and using the very iconic uh, color scheme of red, black, and white or the color of the paper. The reason why it was so successful was due to its simplistic nature and uh, we covered this with the Placasteel movement. but. Uh, mind you that all these movements tend to happen around the same time, so there's going to be a bunch of overlap. So, Russian constructivism was very straightforward, with a straightforward message, a uh, two-color style, maybe one or two illustrations, very similar to Placa Steel. Um, and it spread like wildfire. Everyone was using these t sorts of posters to present their message. In fact, it was so known for these posters that during the Cold War when uh, Russia was the Soviet Union and they were branded as the Reds for communists, it became due, it was known as this due to how heavy the colors red were used in their posters. Now the reason why they used so much red was just because it was the only pigments that were available in Russia, red and black. Um, any other colors such as yellow, blue, and green were very expensive to import, and they had to import them through Sweden and Norway and Finland, and uh, to save on export costs, they decided to use red and black. So, that aside, the color red became synonymous with the communist regime of the Soviet Union, hence the reds, and here's where we're going to transition into the sort of how this imposed idea sort of melded its way into our entertainment industry and the way we project information. So we know that the Soviet Union has evolved the colors red, black, and white for economic reasons. Since the Red Scare and the Cold War, the U.S. has gone on an extreme anti-communist, went on an extreme anti-communist platform. Anything, anything deemed too left-leaning or really anything anti-government was branded as uh, communist propaganda, and during this time, a lot of the set sort of a precedent and embedded a growing mistrust of uh, Russia and the other major um, communist power at the time, China, which you know can you can see echoes of it today. But not to get too uh, political, um, what what I can talk about is the effects of what this had with uh, entertainment, with the entertainment industry. Um, it's no surprise that in many thrillers, um, the mastermind behind the uh, quintessential evil organization is usually Russia or Chinese. The things that pop up to me are Lethal Weapon and uh, several action movies today. Similar to that, um, not only for movies, but in video games. Uh, video games have taken a huge uh, inspiration behind this idea. They have taken the color scheme for the villains to include red, black, and white. And one of two, there are going to be two examples I talk about. One kind of sort of hits the nail on the head of this, the idea of it, and one sort of takes a parody of it. One is in a game called XCOM 2, and one of the factions you fight against being Advent. In the game, you're a guerrilla resistance fighting against the New World Order established by aliens, whose true intentions are kept secret from the rest of the world. Now the Advent faction, which are their enforcers, they use the exact same color scheme that is typical of Russian constructivism. Their troopers are clad in full black, their officers are donned in a morose dark red, and their mechanized robots are pastel white. Uh, later on, as you get different variants of them, the heavy robots are covered red with white uh, lines across their bodies. They're a priest with solid pastel white. So these three colors are the, kept the same and they're used to a very great effect. And it's interesting to see that they took that red and black and very simple design pattern used in Russian constructivism as a burgeoning stylized point. Now granted, they don't have anything in common with the Soviet Union or communist teachings, but that underlying sense of 
red, black, and white being used for villains has been kept true. That being said, not all evil empires video games use red and black as a symbol of authority and communism. In some cases, the colors can be used satirically. An example being the video game franchise Borderlands. Uh, the gun manufacturers for the different weapons have developed their own specialty weapons. Uh, the torque weapons, for example, use high explosive ammo, making each weapon have exploding bullets. Um, the corporation known as Vladoff uses rapid fire weapons, and I will be playing that right now for you all to look at. In these trying times, the Vladoff Corporation is certain of one thing. They are coming. Use our high fire rate weapons to topple the oppressors and take back your rightful freedom! You will bury them under an avalanche of lead! And as they are driven back, they will see one brand of weapon in the hands of those who have defeated them! Rado! So you can see in the weapons trailer that the Vladov Corporation, uh, they use the, they have, they have playing the Soviet national anthem in the background with black figures on a red background fighting against these bright blue soldiers. And despite the tongue-in-cheek notions of a unified people fighting for their homeland, the Vladov Corporation uses the same red and black for their ad, yet they don't come off as authoritarian, mostly due to the satirical nature. A fun fact of irony is the use of the heavy communist imagery to promote an intergalactic arms manufacturer. So Russian constructivism has been used for political movements, an example being uh, the hope the very famous Hope Black Obama um, poster, which was uh, made, despite it using the blue color, it was made as uh, by someone who uses a lot of inspiration from Russian constructivism, and it's it's, it's a beautiful art aesthetic for modern day artists. So. Um, however, it's still being tied to its roots in the entertainment industry. While it's no important to know the roots, it's equally important not to be defined by the old ways. You know, many people today, at least with art, tend to tie artistic movements with a specific cause. And while that is true that some art movements may have an origin in the cause, it's important not to get too caught up with them because you need to define it for your own. Uh, I say take it as the Vladov Corporation from Borderlands and make it a satire of the original source. Uh, that is it for Russian Constructivism. This one went on a little longer. Next time, we will be talking about Bauhaus and a bit of postmodernism. Uh, that will be the last two videos in for this uh, presentation. I hope you guys all enjoyed uh, these videos. I'll see you next time.